Church, we are going to be today, 2 Corinthians 5, 16. I have titled this from now on. And we're talking about faith. And in verse 16, wherefore henceforth, which is what the word henceforth means, from now on, moving forward, know we no man after the flesh, yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now, and here we go again, here's the word now, henceforth, know we him no more. So according to our carnal understanding and ways of thinking, we used to, we thought we understood God and his ways until we allowed the Holy Spirit to reveal who he really is. Because the Bible says no man knows unless it's revealed by the Spirit. And therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Old things are passed. You know, those things that you're not, uh, that we're a bit ashamed of, I should say, are passed away. Forgetting the, what's behind us and moving forward. And if you're able to do this down in verse 20, and you can, I like, like we've shared, you can read the whole thing. We're just giving you some food for thought today, hopefully some inspiration. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did, for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be reconciled to God. So the reconciliation is taking place now. Now, if we go back to Romans 6, and you're going to see a a common word come up today, and I pray that this seed plants in you and, and grows, because now, now, today, Romans 6, 6, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that's the doctrine of Christ, it teaches you how to get rid of the old and allow the new to manifest. That the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth, from now on, we should not serve sin. So there's no reason to be stuck in sin anymore. You know, I, as I was young in the Lord, and all, you know, and of course I was coming out of the old, mo moving into the new. There, it seemed like the, the old was more of an influence at times because all I heard about is backsliding. And then the Lord said, what are you backsliding for? Let's keep moving forward. Forget about what's behind you. It's what's in front of you. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Well, you're not going to believe or have faith unless you've died to the old man and the old way of thinking. We walk by faith, not sight. Knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, dies more, death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he lives, he lives unto God. Folks, you should know that these old things, they don't have dominion over you either. You have power to tread over serpents and scorpions and all the power of the enemy. I don't want to give the enemy too much power. How about the influence? But when does that take place? Verse 8. Now. Now. And, you know, if people were to come up to you and say, hey, what time is it? What do you tell them? What time it was earlier this morning? What time it is this afternoon? What time? No. They want to know right now. Well, according to the God's time clock, now. Now faith is. Now is the accepted time. No, well, Romans 13. Let's go as long as we're in Romans. Romans 13, 11. And that knowing the time. Now see, now you see the word knowing coming up. Unto you is given to know the mystery. You want to know these things that God has provided because he's made them available for you. You don't want to sit there and guess and him. Well, I think it says this. Because someday you're going to have to stand before God and give account of your life. You don't want to give some wishy-washy water down. You want to know, God, I know. I know that I did what you asked. I know what your word says. And he's going to look back and say, well done, good and faithful servant. Absolutely. 
You're part of my family. And knowing that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than we believed. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. And then, then verse 13 gets into that old stuff we used to, the old things that are passed away. Let us walk honestly as in the day and not in rioting and drunkenness and chambering, reveling is what chambering means, wantonness, unbridled lust, and not in strife and envy, but put you on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill its lust. So my encouragement today is, can you operate in the now? Why not? Right now. Now faith is in play. It's real. It's alive. Operate now. Forget about what happened yesterday. And please don't take thought for tomorrow. Tomorrow will have its own challenges. Tomorrow is the now you don't need to be thinking about. That'll take that'll that'll be something that you don't need to deal with today. Can you stay in the now? If you do, then you can operate in faith, and then you can know that you and God are one and the same. I go back to, uh, are in agreement of one accord, one of mine. That's what, when the Lord mentioned that he thought it not robbery to be equal with God, well, either should you. Now, when I say equal, that doesn't mean you're walking around going, well, I'm God. In fact, there's people walking around. Uh, now I see some of these people name their children Messiah. <laughs> Yowza. Um, but to be equal, God means you're like minded one. You're in agreement. That's why there's peace. That's why, and that's all people are doing in life is seeking for peace. They're looking for peace. It's just there's so many other cheap imitations that people settle for. The, and we just talked about some of them in Romans about the chambering, the reveling, the drunkenness, and that stuff. That's not going to bring you peace. John four. And I'm in 23, but the hour comes, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeks such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship in spirit and truth. I'll tell you, ladies and gentlemen, in my searching over the years, there's two things I haven't found much of, spirit and truth, at least in my search. now. I found spirit and truth in his word by the Holy Spirit and understanding the doctrine of Christ because it's a must. It's a must because it allows me to know who I am in Christ and it casts out all fear. Why? Because I'm casting down imaginations. I'm not living in an imaginary realm. I'm not living in fear. Um, what did I see? Oh, fear The uh, stands for false evidence appearing real. <laughs> So cast down, forget it, take no thought for your life. A couple good chapters to look at for that. Matthew 6, Luke 12, take no thought for your life. Let the Lord cast your care upon, let him handle it. He does the caring for you. He can only do as much caring as you allow him. Cast all that care upon him. 1 Peter 5, 7 tells you that, encourages you that. Why? So you can live in the now. Now faith is. Um, Hebrews 12, and keep in mind that word now, as you go through your studies, it's going to come up numerous other times in the Bible. It's all through the Bible. Uh, 12, 11 of Hebrews, now no chastening for the present seems to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward, it yields a peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. Chastening is not just, you know, like when we were a child, we had to be spanked and, and scourged. Uh, and, and it does use the word scourge farther up in this chapter. Again, you can read the whole chapter dealing, does deal with chastening as well. It can be training or even retraining. You know, when you start walking in a newness of life, it takes a little time to adjust to that. Your spirit man goes, ooh, this is awesome. And, and the flesh is going, wait a minute, I need to analyze this first. So it takes a while to get the two in agreement of like-minded one accord. But then there's peace. Afterward, it yields it because you know, 
I'm moving ahead with the Lord, and the Lord's working with me, confirming his word with signs following in my life. So, you know, keep in mind, what time is it? Uh, how about now? Now, and even if you go back in Hebrews, you can go back to 1038, for starters. Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Why do we? Why would they draw back? Well, you, you start the mind starts analyzing the mind. The imaginations take over. Next thing you know, you're you're in a worst case scenario. Somebody once said that uh, Christians' life is full of calamities, ninety nine point nine percent of which never take place. Think about that. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but them that believe to the saving of the soul. Why? Because you're operating in 11.1 here. Now faith is. You want substance in your life? You want your faith to have substance, a concrete foundation? It's right now. The substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You know, people get on, I see these debates, and they, they'll argue with non-believers. And the non-believers come up with their arguments. And these guys, you know what? God's existence is not in the outward realm. The Lord told the people that. The kingdom of God comes not without observation. Evil and adul adulterous generation, they're looking for a sign. That's not where the evidence. The evidence is in the realm of the spirit. And when you get hold of that, folks, <clears throat> you'll learn how to operate in the now. And you'll quit living in an imaginary realm. Or... Pointing to people, you know, so much of this stuff today, you see, oh, it's, you send this money, you get a barrel of money in return, and your life is complete. No, you're, you're pointing to people the wrong way. The devil tried to do that with the Lord himself. He said all these in the in his temptation in the wilderness. Well, I'll give you, you know, Lord had his own wilderness experience, just like the children of Israel. The devil came at him and said, well, I can give you the kingdoms of this world and the glory of, oh, you could be a, a well-known preacher. He said, no. I can only worship the Lord, and him only am, am I going to serve. But remember, he said, it is written. He had that faith operating in the now. It is written. Where? Well, in a book? Uh, how about in his heart? Written in the tables of his heart. And that's why he was able to preach as one that has authority. And not as these other people that did not have much authority in their life or knew what they were talking about. Let's go ahead here. As long as we're in this vicinity, you head towards the book of Revelation. Right before you get to the book of Revelation, you're going to deal with a guy named Jude. There was an old famous song years ago called Hey Jude. Jude was actually the brother, one of the brothers of the Lord. Yeah, our Lord had brothers and sisters. And Jude encouraged the church in verse 24 by saying, Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Well, would you not like to be partaking of some exceeding joy? Now unto him that is it, only he can present you faultless with exceeding. And just as a side note, you're going to see this term mentioned again. Now unto him that is able in the word exceeding. Go back and look at Ephesians 3.20. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think. Wow. So why would you not want to operate in that realm? He's He's the only one that could, God is the only one who presents you faultless. Again, don't you want to stand before the Lord and hear, well done, good and faithful servant? Folks, you're going to suffer anyway in this world. No matter what, you, there's no free lunch. There's no ticket to euphoria. There's no, you're going to suffer in this realm. So why not suffer for the right reason? By keeping the body in subjection to the spirit, dying to self, dying to the old man so that a new man can resurrect in you and you can walk in a newness of life. There's nothing new under the sun in the outward. Why waste your time? It's all in the inward, folks. So, as you go through your studies, and here's a side note, Malachi 3.10, he, he said, prove me. The Lord himself said, prove me now herewith, saying, the Lord, if I will not pour, open, pour out a blessing for you, they'll not, the windows of heaven are going to open up and it's just going to rain 
on your parade. All right, folks. My uh, The Lord's message today is encouragement. Stay in the now. Stay in today. And expect the best. God bless.